Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Headway Civil Online Study. We'll start with the subject Soil Mechanics and Foundation Engineering. In any civil engineering competitive exam, this subject plays a vital role because you will find considerable portion coming from here. Before getting into the subject, let us see the chapters which we will be studying under Soil Mechanics and Foundation Engineering. Under Soil Mechanics, we will be studying the first chapter is soil types and formation, second is the properties of soil, third is permeability, fourth is compressibility and consolidation, fifth is the compaction of soil, sixth seepage analysis, seventh stress distribution in soil and eighth is shear strength of soil. Now let us look at the chapters which we need to study under foundation engineering. The first one is the retaining wall and the earth pressure theories. Second is the stability analysis of slopes. Third is shallow foundation and bearing capacity. Fourth is deep foundation and fifth is soil stabilization and exploration. So under soil mechanics and foundation engineering, we'll be studying in total 13 chapters. In this video, I'll be discussing the first chapter of soil mechanics, which is soil types and formation. So let us get into the chapter. Firstly, we need to know how soil formation occurs. Soil is generally formed from the weathering of rocks. So weathering refers to the breaking down of rocks into smaller particles. This weathering can be of two types, either physical or chemical weathering. Physical weathering is often termed as mechanical weathering. Weathering. Physical weathering of rocks is the wearing of rocks or we can say is the breaking down of rocks to smaller particles due to the action of agents like sudden temperature change or expansive forces of freezing water in fissures etc. For example, if we um, consider a rock somehow like this and it say the rock comprises of a fine crack of fissure in it. Uh, and if water gets trapped in this portion, what will happen in cold regions? The water will get frozen up and as a result of which this fine crack will try to expand and it will exert some form of expansive force on the rock. Due to this, the rock will get broken down into two portions. So it is getting separated. So from a larger particle, it is getting converted into smaller sized particles right so this is what is weathering is in doing so this is the process involving is known as physical weathering now let us move on to the chemical weathering chemical weathering or chemical decomposition of rocks may occur due to oxidation hydration carbonation leaching etc so what are the process of chemical weathering just remember this Oxidation, hydration, carbonation, leaching, etc. So the question you will find from this region as to what are the process that are involved in chemical weathering, the answer will be oxidation, hydration, carbonation, leaching. So you will find out. Uh, questions if any other processes are given in the question so you know already what are the process involved in chemical weathering no need to get into any of the details of this portion just an overview is required and if you get this idea you'll be able to answer the question okay now let us move on to the portion the soil that is formed by physical weathering includes which type of soil gravels and sand so from there from here we can say that physical weathering results in the formation of soils which are coarse grain because gravel and sand we can consider it under a coarse grain soil so these are coarse grain and soil that are formed by chemical weathering includes clay silt etc which are basically 
fine grain soil. So coarse grain soil are generally formed by physical weathering and fine grain soils are generally formed by chemical weathering. Fine. Now the classification of soil can be further made on the basis of the place of origin and transportation. Okay. So from uh, on the basis of this two, we can classify soil as residual soil or transported soil. So what do you mean by residual soil? Residual soils are those, for example, if we consider a parent rock after its withering, what will happen? It will get broken down into smaller size particles. These particles, if it remains close to these two or if they are remaining close to one another, then we can say this soil as residual soil. That means the soil particles after its formation are remaining close to their parent rock, we can consider that type of soil as residual soil. And the second one which is transported soil, if we, now if the formation after weathering this soil, if it is getting, say if it is getting transported by any agents, sorry, it is any agents, it is carried away and resulting in the formation of it is known as transported soil. So, in transported soil, these, there will be always an agent involved in its transportation. This agents can be air, it can be water, it can be ice, it can be under gravity, etc. So, based upon this, the agent that is involved, we can further classify transported soil as alluvial soil, lacustrine soil, marine soil, glacial soil, Eolian soil and colluvial soil. So, the first one is the alluvial soil. The remember these things, the key point that is alluvial soil formed from running water. Okay. Lacustrine soils are those which are formed from still water, lakes or fresh water. Marine soil as the name suggests is the sea water. Glacial soil from the name only you can infer it is due to ice. Eolian is basically wind or we can say it is air blown sand, uh, air blown soil. And colluvial soil is basically due to gravitational forces. So, remember this alluvial, running water, lacustrine, steel water, marine, sea water, glacial, ice, aeolian, air, colluvial, gravity. So, this way you need to remember this portion, this classification because it is very important and you will find question coming from this portion. Okay. Some other types of soil or we can say there are various examples of this type of transported soil are Loys, as we already know that aeolian soils are those which are formed from air or from wind, right? So, loys is an example of an aeolian soil. So, here is an example of an aeolian soil is loys. It's a type of aeolian soil. Okay, so question comes, loys is a type of, the option will be given aeolian, colluvial, marine. So, the option answer will be aeolian soil. Bentonite is a type of soil which is a chemically weathered volcanic ash. Peat is a highly organic soil, it is fibrous, it is highly compressible. Muck is a mixture of fine particles, inorganic soil, black decomposed organic matter. Talus, you will find out this question also, it is very common question. What is talus? It is a type of colluvial soil. So, colluvial soil, I already told those soils are formed by this colluvial soils formed from the gravitational forces. So, talus is an example of colluvial soil. Okay. Mole is formed from marine origin. So, it is a type of marine soil we can say. Okay. So, marine soil generally characteristic wise it has got low shear strength and is highly compressible. So, foundation in marine soil is generally not preferable. Okay. In black cotton soils are those soils which comprises of clay minerals called Mont Morillonite. I will in the next portion we will study what are the different clay minerals. But as to as of now, remember this, the black cotton soil consists of Montmorillonite which causes excessive swelling and shrinkage in soil. So, it is a characteristic of this clay mineral that it undergoes or it results in swelling and shrinkage in soil, right. So, in this type of soil generally uh, we prefer under rim piles. Uh, this portion of piles, I will um, make a video in the deep foundation chapter when I will teach, I will discuss this in detail. 
for as of now you just remember under rim piles are made or constructed in this type of soil next moving on to the clay minerals remember classification of clay minerals can be of three types basically basic classifications are of three types the first one is the kaolin group second is the montmorillonite and the third is elite group okay so how these clay minerals are formed okay combination of two shades of silica and gypsite in different arrangements leads to the formation of these clay minerals so what i told is when silica and gypsite combines these are the two sheets combining to form this different clay minerals so remember these are not sand minerals these are clay minerals kaolin mount mineral elite now the question comes like this what are the bond that is present in kaolin group in mount pointonight in elite these are the question generally comes so for this portion we just need to uh, learn this thing that kaolin group the bond that is present is hydrogen bond in between the layers and remember in kaolin group the bond strength is the most because hydrogen bond has got the greater strength as compared to iron covalent or any others mont pointonight it has got van der waals forces of attraction between the layers and in elite it has got potassium ionic bond between the layers and activity wise if you see kaolin is the least active and mont morillonight is highly active okay the activity number also i'll be discussing in my next chapter which is the properties of soil okay now let us move on to the portion that is the soil structure what are the different structures of soil the first we will learn is the single grain structure so single grain structure remember it is a characteristic of coarse grain soil coarse grain soil means for example gravels for example coarse sand particles right so how the soil formation takes place is somehow like this so coarse grain particles are attached to one another somehow this manner so resulting in the formation of coarse grain structure okay the forces that are responsible for its formation is basically the gravity force and surface forces now let us move on to the honeycomb structure mainly found in silt deposits a loose stable structure the structure generally forms somehow like this uh, so some of the it's like a chain the formation will be from a somehow like chain this is a loose stable structure the particles are not attached to one another in a confined manner as in case of coarse grain structures so it's basically a loose structure but it's the structure is stable and it's capable of uh, carrying static loads okay but it's not capable of carrying dynamic loads like vibration and all that it's not capable okay next moving on to the structure is the flocculated and dispersed structure which is very important and question you will find out from this portion flocculated and dispersed structure okay the flocculated and dispersed structure both you will find in clay deposits in flocculated structure the structure will seem out like this if you say this is a particle this is another particle which are connected to one another having h to h contact that means edge of one particle connected to other so it has got to edge to edge or we can say edge to face edge to face means what this is the particles its edge is connected to the face of this particle so edge to edge or edge to face contact so somehow like this if you see find out somewhere like this okay so this is an example of flocculated structure in dispersed structure the structure will show a face to face contact that means what this is the face of a particle so another face of a particle connecting somehow like this so it's a face to face contact between these particles so this will found out this this type of orientation you will find out in dispersed structure right Next, we have got the coarse grain skeleton structure, uh, mostly found in composite soil. That means it's comprising of both coarse grain and fine grain soils present in it, or coarse grain fine grain structures present in it. So it's basically somehow like this. So the content of this is the fine particles present in between the coarser particles, somehow like this. Okay. 
cohesive matrix structure is similar to this of coarse grain structure but in this case the fraction of finer particles is more as compared to the coarser particles so if you consider this as coarser particles in the matrix so you the finer content will be more as compared to the coarser content over here okay so in this the finer content is more as compared to the coarser country the percentage of fine grain fraction and lower percentage of coarse grain fraction this is also found in composites on and is most compressible now let us look at some of the questions from the portion which we have already studied now so the first question tells the clay mineral with the largest swelling and shrinkage characteristic i already discussed in black cotton soil the clay mineral that is present is montmorillonite which is responsible for swelling and shrinkage correct characteristic in soil so the answer will be montmorillonite right thallus is the soil transported by what will be the answer yes the thallus is the soil that is transported by gravitational forces right so wind you know by the wind the soil that is transported is loess right chemical weathering of soil is caused due to oxidation carbonation hydration leaching this all are the process of chemical weathering so answer will be all the above next is the sand particles are made of sand particles are made from rock minerals the answer will be because other three option b c d these things are i already told these are all clay minerals these are not sand particles okay these are clay minerals so clay particles will be formed from this not the sand particles remember this geological cycle for the formation of soil is the first process involved in the formation is weathering second the soil will get transported if it's a transported soil next the deposition will take place and next upheaval will occur so the option will be d dispersed type of structure you all know the answer is yes it has got the face to face or parallel orientation right so face to face or parallel orientation i already discussed face to face or parallel orientation in this residual soils are formed by residual soils are those soils which remains close to their parent rock that means they are not being transported by any agents so glacier water rain these are all agents that are involved in transported soil so the answer will be none of that work because residual soils always remain close to their parent rock next the colluvial soils are those which are colluvial soil example is thallus it's deposited by gravitational force so its example we already know the example is thallus example okay next this question i uh, this question i did not discuss so the loam is a mixture of just remember this loam is a type of soil which comprises of sand silt and clay in different fraction it comprises of all the three particles okay all the three types of soils are present in it but in different fraction it's present which of the following is a type of eolian soil i know this is loess we already studied this that eolian soil loess is a type of eolian soil now what is thallus thallus is a type of colluvial soil what is marl marl is a type of marine soil and remember till is a type of glacial soil this i have not discussed earlier but do remember this till is a type of glacial soil this is important okay remember this if you're making a notes just mark it mark it down just jot it down in your paper so till is an example of a glacial soil and glacial soil are often termed as glacial drift or we can say it's a drift soil this is also important to know because you might get questions from here as well fine so we have already completed this entire chapter soil types and formation in then in my next video i'll be making uh, i'll be teaching the properties of soil mostly the index properties of soil so till then you study this chapter fully try out the questions from different books if you have okay if you get any problem do comment below i'll get back to you i'll try to solve your problems as early as possible okay so guys thank you for listening do comment like and subscribe my videos for more updates thank you